Hi everyone, welcome to The Shack. We're looking at a few radios, portables. Um, one of my subscribers asked me to do a video on uh, basically just listing, describing all of the radios in my shack. And um, there's way too many to do that all in one go. So um, I thought I'd just uh, go through the portables that I currently own. Um, Having laid them out on the floor, it makes me realise that if I hadn't actually sold quite a few, um, as a lot of us do, buy a receiver, use it for a while, sell it, buy something else, um, I'd probably need about twice as much space. But uh, these are the ones that I've currently got, or at least those that I can find. I'm missing at least one Texan um, and probably one or two others, uh, but not expensive receivers, sort of fairly uh, cheap models. So. Um, so yeah, so this is what I can actually find. Um, and yeah, I guess it's quite a few, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna briefly run through what they are, just give a very short narrative on all of them. So um, the subscriber who requested this video hopefully will be satisfied. And um, you know, some of you might find this interesting as well. So I think I'll start at the, on the, at the back row, furthest away from the camera, working from left to right. So a lot of you will recognize the Sanjin ATS, uh, 803A. Um, I got this rig for my birthday, I think, in 1988. Um, decided to buy it. That was probably only my second shortwave radio that I owned before that. I think I had only ever owned an Amstrad sort of analog communications receiver. Um, I seem to remember attaching a short wire to the back of it and hanging it over the sort of curtain pole. Uh, couldn't hear really very much at all, so basically gave up. And then it went. It ended up in the shed for about 20 years, um, maybe longer. Um, and then when I got back into DXing in 2015, I got it out of the shed. It wasn't working. It kind of corroded inside. Uh, the battery compartment had basically electrically dis disconnected itself through corrosion from the from the power board, and got it going again. And um, and I've used it quite a lot ever since, um, although not recently. So. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it in 1988. Uh, Mateus, aka Sendiega, who doesn't appear on YouTube anymore, but he described it as the best budget shortwave receiver of all time, and I think he's probably got that about right. So, and you can still buy them, they're still popular, it's good audio. Um, and well, what am I saying? It's 30, 34 years old. Um, so, uh, you know. It's an old piece of kit now, but uh, you can still buy them. I think you can still, there's the old new one every now and then uh, appears or unused. So that's the back row uh, far left. Next to it is the Texan PL880 that uh, a lot of you will recognize. Um, the radio next to it, the Eaton Satellite Grundig Edition, actually, I bought that first and that radio proved to be so good, it kind of delayed me buying the PL880 because this, the, the, the Eaton was so good it didn't seem worthwhile but eventually i did probably because there was very little else available on the market and the pl880 superb audio superb controls brilliant ergonomics fantastically sensitive um excellent selectivity in every way as good as the eaton um but with better audio and overall feels higher quality um whereas the eaton had been my sort of choice of receiver for traveling uh, that then passed over to the Texan PL880, so um, and I've travelled with it ever since. And then, uh, so that's the Eaton um, and the PL880, and then next to the Eaton on the far right of the back row is the Texan um, H51X. So that's a new radio. I've had it a few months. Paid three hundred and thirty quid for it. It's great for listening to broadcast stations. I use it, I listen to Radio 4, Radio 5 Live, but I have to say, I've never managed to receive any Transatlantic DX on it. The sideband audio, uh, in my opinion, is terrible. Um, and if I'm being perfectly honest, I wish I'd never bought it. I wish I'd waited and ploughed even more money into the reincarnated E1, which if memory serves me correctly, is gonna be known as the Eaton Satellite HD. So I personally don't recommend the um, the H501X unless you just want to use it for listening to broadcast stations. Audio is superb, ergonomics are good, um, quality of the controls are very good. Aesthetically, I like it very much. The industrial design with the 
twin speakers, stereo on FM, etc. But if you're if you're buying a portable for DXing, I don't recommend the H501X at all. So that's the back row. Right, um, next row in uh, from the back. Uh, again, left to right is the Sony. Well, it's a radio. Actually, it's very similar actually to the Sanjin uh, ATS 803A. You'd almost think the Sanjin might have copied Sony. So that's the original Sony ICF 2001 from 1980, the world's first PLL um, direct frequency access um, portable shortwave receiver. Um, there's a very famous photograph of John Lennon with one of these in a recording studio with one of these on a desk next to him. Uh, and I can still remember the first time I saw the uh, ICF 2001. It was literally like something had landed from Mars. Um, I would have been used to lusting after the Binatone world style, that kind of stuff, analog radios with a world map. And then I was out, I think, with um, my parents and saw one of those in the shop window and uh, yeah, it blew me away and uh, bought one only a few years ago, actually. They say don't ever bother meeting heroes. Um, that's true with this radio. Um, performance is only mediocre. It built, designed, you know, 40 years ago and it's very, very sensitive to external noise. So it's almost unusable inside the house. Um, and since then, it's given up the ghost. There are a couple of reasons why I might have done that. I won't go into that now. It will take too long, but it's basically died. I think I paid 50 quid for it. So, um, you know, it's not a huge loss financially. Um, it's just a shame it's not working anymore, but it, it basically just um, doesn't perform very well in uh, uh, in the modern age with all of the, uh, uh, you know, electrical noise that is part and parcel of modern life. Right, next to that is the Panasonic RFB40. This is the RFB65's little brother or sister. Um, and I got this radio, I think, in 1990. Uh, it's quite sensitive. I've picked up Radio Clube to Power on it. Um, so it's quite sensitive. Selectivity is awful. It, five kilohertz tuning steps. Um, no audio bandwidth options. Um, so although it's a neat little radio for DXing, it's severely limited. I did actually lend it to my brother and he lost it for about 20 years and found it about a year ago and gave it me back. So uh, I think I gave it to him sort of like 1997 or 98 and he gave it literally back to me about 22 years later in perfect condition because he never used it. So um, uh, it, I did have an RFB 65, as you guys know, but I never used it and sold it. Next to that is the Sony ICF SW 7600G. I had one of these for Christmas in about 1999 didn't use it and eBayed it. That particular model, and just in case any of you are lost, I'm talking about this one, was given to me by a gentleman in uh, when I was working out in the Brazilian rainforest. Um, uh, he, gave it to, he gave it to me as a gift, um, and I've not really used it, but they are uh, uh, um, a, a pretty, well, they perform pretty well. It's got synchronous detection, etc., cetera, um, and uh, it is a good performer. Um, I really don't use it very often, I have to say. Uh, it was very nice of him to give it to me, and I have used it, but um, I, I don't use it very often. As I said, I had one, I think, for Christmas in 99, and then just eBayed it. Um, next to that is the famous Sanjin ATS-909, uh, uh, and which is this one here. 909X, in my opinion, that's aesthetically probably the best looking small portable shortwave receiver ever. Um, I bought it because when it first came out, nobody really liked it. They liked the they liked the design, liked the audio, um, but as a sort of DX machine, had a really bad reputation. Supposedly very insensitive on the whip, uh, which is kind of true. Um, so I bought one just to be difficult and took it down to the woods and attached some huge antennas to it. And it performed nearly as well as the Eaton uh, satellite Grundig edition um, behind it. So, um, and I think that I don't know whether the uh, 909X2 is it, whatever it's called, the replacement for the 909X. I, I hear it's better, um, but uh, yeah, lovely looking radio that again, didn't really get a lot of use. Right, the little radio next to that is the Sony um, ICF uh, 100 and about the size of a packet of cigarettes. Brilliant little radio, I've used it a lot. If you've been following the channel for years, um, you'll know that um, 
that I've used that radio extensively. It came out in the 90s and in terms of sensitivity, it's up there almost with the legendary ICF uh, 2001D. It's that good um, and uh, it's had a, a, a lot of use. Um, just in terms of years, going back to the Sony, the original Sony 2001, that came out in 1980. So um, it just goes to show that uh, um, it's been over 40 years since we've been able to press a button, rely on PLL, press a button for direct frequency access uh, for shortwave. And um, yeah, the ICF um, uh, 100, uh, SW100 came out, well, what are we talking about? Yeah many years later probably 15 years later just goes to show how the electronics um, um miniaturization of electronics from 1980 to whenever that came out which i think was mid 90s um and that's a keeper the sw100 never get rid of it i did also have an sw7 which i found performed even better but um i never used it and i i bought it for 30 quid at a rally which was an absolute steal. And in the end, because I never used it, I sold it for about 200 quid more than that. I can't remember exactly, but um, another brilliant radio. Next to that is the Belka DX, which is um, even smaller, um, excellent radio, super selectivity, super sensitivity. Um, it doesn't go down below 1.5 megahertz, if memory serves me correctly. So, um, but I've got a converter that um, a friend um, from Harwell Amateur Radio Society built for me so I can actually use it on long wave so uh, an up converter so 150 ki oh, sorry 198 kilohertz for long wave becomes 10.198 megahertz so um, so yeah uh, I don't use it ergonomics on it are terrible I have to say um, I can't get used to the ergonomics so it doesn't get a lot of use but um, it's because you kind of have to Push the the um, the knob on the side, push it in, click it in, scroll through a menu system just to do something as simple as turning up the volume, adjusting audio bandwidth filters, etc. So it has that shortcoming which I don't like. Others may not may not be bothered by it, but if you want a compact radio for travelling, wow, it, that the Belka DX is the radio for you. So that's the but the but the the two back rows. So moving forward again to here, the famous. Sony ICF SW77. This is the replacement actually for the 2001 uh, D. And I think it came out in about 19, uh, I was gonna say 1990. Um, someone can correct me on that, the, the ICF SW77. I think, I think it was 1990. And if, if it wasn't, it was early. I think it was early 90s. Um, uh, I've tested the uh, ICF SW77 uh, against the radio next to it, the, the 2001D, and the 2001D is slightly superior. Um, it's uh, still a brilliant radio, still one of the best shortwave portables of all time. There's no doubt about that. Synchronous detection on the ICF uh, SW77 works slightly differently. Um, I much prefer the sync on the... 2001D next to it is the best synchronous detection, I, in my opinion, of any receiver, and that includes the Eaton E1, um, because the way that the lock works on it, you can actually, even if a, a, a tropical band station is broadcasting slightly off frequency, when the lock light flicks, flips from above to below, um, I'm just wondering if I can actually show you, um, if you look here, there's, I don't know if it's clearly you can see it, but for the lock, for the synchronous detection lock, there's upper and lower. So when uh, you're below the frequency of the target signal, the the sync lock actually indicates lower. And then when you when you flick when you go above it to upper, you know you're basically bang on frequency. And that's a little bit different to um, how the ICF SW77 works. Um, so yeah. Um, I think it's either 1990 or early 90s for the um, ICF SW77. And then 2001D, widely regarded as, well, certainly one of the best shortwave portables of all time. Some people think it's the best. I think the Eaton E1 pips it, personally. 
Um, that radio came out in 1983, and I, they were manufacturing it for, I think, the best part of 15 years. Imagine buying an electronic device today and it's still the same thing, still being manufactured 15 years later. It'd be ridiculous, wouldn't it? But um, that's what happened with the 2001D. Still highly sought after. Um, and yeah, still one of the best shortwave portables of all time. Um, and if I was going to own one shortwave portable, I think that would still be the one. So next to that is the XH Data D808. These came out a few years ago. When they first came out, they were like 60 quid. And they feel cheap. They look slightly cheap. But in terms of absolute sensitivity um, and selectivity, performance as a function of price, you cannot beat the D808. You simply can't. I was blown away by it. Took it to Brazil. Not terrible at uh, overloading. Um, with uh, so the, the dynamic range is poor doesn't handle very strong signals very well i actually blew mine up by attaching it to a very long wire fence during a thunderstorm um well that's not that's my fault not the fault of the radio um and i bought another one and haven't really used it very much the audio isn't very good um but in terms of sort of fundamental performance in terms of sensitivity that radio is still fantastic value for money um and uh yeah i highly recommend it anyone who's on a budget wants to buy shortwave portable then um then this is definitely the radio for you um it's uh yeah as i said it kind of feels cheap it looks cheap um but then it is cheap but performance superb okay so now we go to sort of the front row left hand side the sony icf uh, 5500M, I think I paid like, I can't remember, I can't remember if it was 50 quid or like 60 quid, something like that, maybe it was more, there'll be a video on the channel, it might have been a bit more, but maybe it was 90 quid, I can't remember, but I bought it at the Harwell Amateur Edge Society Rally, um, I just love the ergonomics of the kind of mid-1970s uh, radio sort of design, um, it's a bit of a weird one, um, so it's got, it's got, FM, shortwave, marine, medium wave. There's no long wave, which is a real shame. Everything works on it, including the kind of mechanical pop-up antenna, you know, literally. Who would have thought? Um, it's just a brilliant audio. Sony quality, obviously, from the mid-70s. Everything still works on it. Um, and, um, yeah, I bought it, obviously, second-hand. Um, and uh, yeah, but I don't use it very often. I keep saying that a lot, don't I? I say that a lot, I don't use it very often. Right, next to that in the uh, plastic kind of case is the Sony ICF uh, SW55. This is actually similar in performance to the ICF SW7600G. Um, clever design, the SW55. There's no speaker grill. Speakers inside the cabinet and the kind of sound waves come through this sort of grill here. Um, it's got wide and narrow audio bandwidth filters. You can attach an external antenna. I did a lot of DXing with, with that radio um, when I first got back into uh, shortwave listening. Um, I think it's a superb looking radio. It's one of the best that Sony did. I think it came out in 95, 1995, um, but it wasn't around long. I think they discontinued it in 98, something like that. But um, I'm not sure how much they go for these days. I haven't looked in a long time. Um, but this kind of, you get this kind of kit with these <coughs> in a, like a plastic kind of case. So, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're traveling, when you're traveling, um, it's protected. But it does mean that you're sort of carrying quite a large plastic case when you could just be carrying a radio. But um, it, you know, okay for chucking it in the back of the car. Um, that was my favourite receiver for quite a long time, the, uh, the uh, ICF SW55. And it was a radio when I was younger that I always looked at and thought, I really want to buy that radio. But even when it came out in 95, it was 300 quid. So I don't know what that equates to today, but it was a lot of money. That was 300 in 95, in 95 I think. And if I'm right that this came out in about 1990, 91, um, uh, then... Um, that was 400, so it just goes to show. Oh, 
Okay, I just looked, so I was almost right. The um, ICF SW77 came out in 1991 for 400 quid. Um, yeah, 30, 31 years ago, a lot of money. So that's the ICF SW55. Next to that is this. The Texan PL360. And this was the first radio I bought when I got back into shortwave listening in 2015. So what happened was I was on YouTube watching videos of some transatlantic medium wave DX with an SDR. And I thought, wow, that looks interesting. And transatlantic medium wave DX was something that always kind of inspired me as a kid to try and uh, achieve that, listen to a station from the other side of the Atlantic on medium wave. I never actually managed it. Um, and so I thought, do you know what? I wonder if that's still interesting. So I thought I'd spend 30 quid and buy a shortwave radio and bought this. And probably the first hundred videos of my, on, on Oxford shortwave log are using this receiver, maybe more. Um, and had a great time using it for 30 quid. Just used to wrap a piece of wire around the telescopic. I've, I've copied Radio Club de Power on 4885 kilohertz with this little radio, um, which I have to say was a bit of a buzz. Um, radio, Voice of Korea, North Korea and all that stuff. So for 30 quid, it was an amazing, um, amazing buy. And it, after I bought this, I then I think I then bought the SW55 and I then bought the Yaesu FRG8800 the sort of tabletop but uh, this is about portables today. So there you go. That's the first radio that I bought when I got back into um the Xing Upateru uh, MVT7100 wideband scanner which I use only these days for airband and a Midland Allen 42DS. Obviously that's actually a CB transceiver but um I only use that for, for listening. And then finally, there's the PL380 in the box at the front, which was given to me as uh, along with a couple of other radios to write a review for Radio User Magazine, and um, which I did, used it, wrote the review, put it back in the box, and I've never used it since. So there you go. So that's basically um, all of the portables that I can think of. And I'm sure if I look hard enough um, that I've got some others. Um, but I either can't remember where they are. Actually, I do have one more. I was in Robert Dias a long time ago, and I saw this Panasonic RFP 50D FM AM two band receiver. I can't remember how much it was. Maybe like ten quid, fifteen quid. So I thought I'll buy that just to do a video, and never got round to it. So there you go. So that's another one. Um, there's a couple of cheap portables I bought in Brazil. I've still got one of those, but. Um, not really worthy of um, uh, discussion, really. These are the receivers that I've used the most in the past. And of them, um, the ones that I use the most now um, is, prob is probably um, the PL880 when I'm traveling. Um, I tend, and I use the H501X for listening to broadcast stuff. I spend most of my time using um, uh, tabletop shortwave uh, receivers, so um, not None of these radios really get a lot of use anymore, but uh, there you go. Um, I hope that was interesting. As I said, I did it. I made this video specifically for one of my subs, but uh, I've never done this before. What I might do is a similar video um, with um, with for my tabletop receivers. Um, if um, so, to prove that anyone actually got to the end of this um, video, um, if you if you'd like to see something similar but covering my tabletop rigs, um, just let me know in the comments and um, I'll happily do it. So there you go. What's the, the oldest radio in here is probably the, SW, the ICF 5500M from the mid 1970s through to the most recent, the H501X from whenever that came out last year, 2021. So, um, you know, not far off sort of 50 years, I suppose, of portable shortwave receiver technology laid out on the floor in my shack. Anyway, I'll stop there. I hope you enjoyed that and um, I'll look forward to uh, hearing your comments. Have a great day. All the best. 73.